Hi, uh, my name is Rich Troughton and thank you for joining me today. Uh, before we get started, there's two things I'd like to mention. The first is that all the slides, speakers, notes, and demos are available for download, and I'm going to be providing a link at the end of the talk. I tend to be one of those folks who can't keep up with the speaker and take notes at the same time. So for those folks in the same situation, there is no need to take notes. Everything I'm going to be covering is going to be available for download. Uh, second is please hold all your questions until the end. If you got questions, make a note of them and ask me afterwards. And with luck, I'll be able to answer most of your questions during the talk itself. So how did we get from SAP in the office to SAP in the house? Well, let's look at how things shaped up. So March 2nd, uh, the SAP executive board sends a company-wide email to ask that only business tr critical travel happen in March. All of our other travel is canceled. All SAP employees are advised to check with their direct management on how employees can work best from home, along with guidance on using our remotely accessible services. March 3rd, uh, the SAP Executive Board announces that effective immediately, all SAP hosted in-person events planned for March are canceled. Now this decision includes all of SAP's planned conferences and our participation in South by Southwest. Internal in-person meetings are still allowed as long as no travel is involved, but participants in other offices should be joining virtually. March 6th, SAP North America encourages all employees based in SAP's Seattle and San Francisco Bay offices to work from home if possible until further notice. The offices themselves remained open for business critical activities and to accommodate those who could not work remotely. March 12th, the SAP Executive Board announces that the existing travel restrictions are being extended until the end of April. Business critical travels being defined as those matters requiring physical attendance to ensure business continuity for all of SAP. Now all of our offices remained open at this point, but the board now requests that all employees worldwide to work remotely. Notice is also given that offices may be closing with short notice, so all employees are asked to take laptops and all necessary IT equipment home in the evenings. Now, along with the travel guidance, uh, the US now begins to restrict travel from Europe. The restriction is initially for nations which are part of the Schengen zone and excludes the UK, but are later extended to include the UK as well. March 17th, SAP North America announces that all of SAP's Canadian offices are closed temporarily in light of Canada's ban on entry into Canada. SAP America's National Corporate Office in Newtown Square, uh, Pennsylvania closes on March 19th as part of Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf's order to close all non-life sustaining businesses in Pennsylvania. March 20th, SAP employees are required to cancel all international travel uh, effective March 22nd, 2020 until further notice. All in-person events are also canceled for the month of April. SAP North America makes the decision to close all US SAP office locations effective March 23rd until further notice. Canadian offices, which had closed early in the week, likewise will remain closed. May 4th, SAP Executive Board announces that all in-person events, including all SAP conferences, are canceled for the remainder of the year. All meetings should use online digital tools, and even when the offices are allowed to reopen, employees should still work from home wherever possible. So we've now gone from a company with large numbers of people in office buildings to the vast majority of us now working from our homes. We are now SAP in the, app, in the house. How? Well, it's fair to say that SAP spent years unknowingly preparing for the situation we're now all in because SAP has fostered a remote friendly workplace culture for a while. In order to work remotely, you need the approval of your immediate manager. And in the US, a large percentage of the SAP America workforce works either partly or entirely remotely. Now to give an idea of how we got to the point of being able to shift to working from home, I'm gonna be describing my own experiences because I think I'm a good example. I was hired in 2017 to be part of the team at SAP, which is responsible for overall management of Apple devices used by SAP. Now as part of my joining the company, I agreed with my boss that I would be working 100% remotely. So my official office is at the SAP America corporate headquarters in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. My actual workplace is at my home near Frederick, Maryland. Now, as part of equipping this office, I was able to take advantage of the following. 
First was being able to order computer equipment from an online portal and have it shipped directly to my house. The second, I have a hardware VPN box that not only connected me to the corporate network, but also provided me with a fully functional wireless access point for our internal company Wi-Fi network. I was also able to take advantage of a setup process for my new equipment in 2017, which only required an internet connection for 90% of the total process. Now, the setup process also provided me with the remote access tools needed to complete the remaining 10% that required being connected to the company network. But how did we get to this in 2017? Let's first back, look back to where we were four years ago in 2016. So to help show our transformation process, I wanna focus in on a single part of it. My team is responsible for supporting and managing SAP's Macs on a company-wide scale. So let's take a look at, at the process for setting up new Macs and upgrading them to new operating systems. So to manage SAP's Macs, we're longtime users of first Casper and then Jam Pro. Jam Pro gives us the ability to set up new Macs, install software, and then manage the Macs configuration and settings. And in particular, our users and technicians rely on self-service to install SAP-approved software and to run scripts to diagnose and fix problems. It is difficult to overstate how useful Jam Pro is to our company's Mac users, and in 2020, it is available to every SAP Mac with an internet connection. However, it hasn't always been that way. In 2016, Thomas Sauresic became the new CIO at SAP, and as part of his new role, he decided that SAP needed to provide not just a good experience for SAP's Mac using employees, but the best experience to be found anywhere. In 2016, though, we were not there. It was not awful. What it was, was typical. The Mac environment was trying to replicate the Windows environment as much as possible. We had a Jampro server which could only manage Macs when they were on the company network. As soon as the Mac left the company network, we were not able to manage them or provide any of Jampro services like the self-service portal. We had two separate wikis, one for IT staff and one for customers. Access to either required being on the company network. And all the Macs were bound to an on-premise Active Directory domain, and we used it for account and login information. This AD domain is only accessible within the company network. And along with being bound to Active Directory, everyone in the company was issued a certificate from our AD Domain's Active Directory Certificate Services. Referred to as SSO certificates, they are used within SAP to authenticate to the vast majority of our services. So our new machine setup process relied on installing the OS from a USB flash drive, then running a separate script that enrolled our, our Macs with Gem Pro. Once enrolled, Gem Pro would then install software and configure the Mac settings. Because our Gem Pro server was only available on the company network, New machines could only be set up within an SAP office. So we had a bazillion local distribution points to distribute software in every SAP office, but none of them could be accessed outside of the company network. So the number of distribution points also meant a delay in deploying software as all needed to be updated before the new software could be installed. So as you can see, even when it came to just setting up new Macs, the resources needed were mostly tied to the company network. So if coronavirus had stuck in, struck in 2016, it would have been difficult, if not impossible, to transform this into a good work from home experience. So we wanted to make Mac management and support resources available to all of our SAP colleagues, no matter where they were working. So that meant that we needed to break out of this management model. So in the process of surveying what could only be accessed from the company network, we did find one thing that was different. SAP has internal communities built using Jam, which is a secure collaboration tool. Jam sites are accessible from outside the company network, and there is even a Jam mobile app for iOS. The Mac at SAP Jam community was very active, and it had more than 3,000 members in 2016, so it was a natural place to hold discussions and Q&A with SAP's Mac users. So as a first step, the decision, the decision was made to sunset the wikis in favor of concentrating content for both the general Mac community and IT technicians into the Mac and SAP Jam site. We also made our on-premise Jam Pro server accessible to the outside internet, which allowed us to manage corporate owned Macs as long as they had an internet connection. And to help support this, we added a Jam Pro cloud distribution point hosted in Amazon Web Services S3 service. Hosting in S3 allowed us to stop using local distribution points and use one global distribution point. 
So this global distribution point also eliminated the delay in distributing new software, as software was instantly available once uploaded to our now solitary distribution point. Now these changes were made more urgent by how the company's Mac population was growing by leaps and bounds. We also had an increasingly mobile workforce where our laptop population far outstripped our desktop population. To provide a goal for relaunching and how we provided the Mac and SAP experience with, for our Mac using colleagues, we chose to coincide it with the launch of Mac OS Sierra in September, 2016. So in addition to our new focus on providing support with only an internet connection, we are also going to begin supporting a new Apple operating system on the day of its release. And as part of that effort, three new applications were developed. Each was designed to handle certain needs we saw within the SAP Mac community. Refresh was built to be an imaging tool that anyone could use. You didn't have to wait on IT to rebuild a Mac. You just needed to have a spare machine or a colleague's spare machine, which you could connect to in target disk mode. Meanwhile, Assistant configured the Mac at a global level installed all necessary software using Jam Pro policies. With Jam Pro now accessible with only an internet connection, this meant that machines can be set up or rebuilt without needing a connection to the company network. Meanwhile, Assistant's job wasn't quite done yet. It also worked at the user level to help the user configure their Mac.
the last one is one I'm actually pretty excited to discuss as it solves a problem for us in a way which is easy for us to support and our users to use no matter where they are. This tool allows our users to work as standard users most of the time because they can always request admin rights when they need them. Privileges is also a self-contained application without network dependencies, so it can be used anywhere at any time. Meanwhile, outside of the Mac platform, we are also developing tools to help us be more transparent with our colleagues. Using SAP's Web Fiori app, web application technology, we developed Apple Pies. Fiori is a way to provide a better user experience for SAP applications built on our S4 HANA platform by providing a browser-based front end for the application. Fiori apps are also available to any SAP employee with an internet connection and a web browser. So in our case, we used it to build our Apple Pies tool. And in this case, we use it to provide uh, live information by API calls about our Mac population to anyone in SAP who cares to look at it. And because it's live information, it is always up to date. Meanwhile, on the social media front, we revamped the Mac at SAP Jam site to help us better communicate with our Mac using colleagues. With this work done, let's look again at what resources require the company network. In the course of a year, we dramatically reduced our dependence on the corporate network. When we hit Sierra's launch day, everything was ready. We used the Mac at SAP Jam community to let our users know that upgrading to Sierra on release day was great. We gave them clear directions on what to do to make their Macs ready to upgrade. First, go to self-service and make your Mac ready. After that, stop by the App Store and install Sierra. We used Apple Pies to show our colleagues what our Sierra adoption rate was and encourage them to upgrade if they hadn't already. By the second day of Sierra's release, we'd already seen a thousand of our colleagues upgrade to Sierra. More importantly, our colleagues had access to the same data that we did so that they could see it as well. Two months following Sierra's release, we were close to having 50% of our fleet upgraded. Meanwhile, we were making changes to our Sierra build to help us become less dependent on the corporate network. The first change was to stop using Active Directory mobile accounts and transition to using local accounts. Local accounts could be created on the Mac and didn't require a connection back to the company network. However, we still wanted to use Active Directory for Kerberos and password management, so at the same time, we began using Apple's Enterprise Connect to synchronize our local account passwords and provide Kerberos ticket management. With this change, we also began using Apple's Enterprise Connect to manage our SSO certificates. So in this case, Enterprise Connect was connecting to AD and running a script, which leveraged the Kerberos credentials provided by Enterprise Connect to request the SSO certificate. 
However, this did still require connection to the corporate network. We also made the decision that it was time to retire our existing JamPro service, which was hosted on our corporate network, and set up a new JamPro service hosted at Amazon Web Services. So why host an AWS? Well, it, we wanted to take advantage of AWS's high availability services. We wanted to make Mac supporting services accessible by SAP employees as long as they had an internet connection. And we wanted to make sure that SAP IT could manage all internet connected SAP owned Macs. Building good infrastructure takes time though. So the team decided that the best approach was debut it in time for high Sierra's release. So Sierra launched and our colleagues adopting it on Moss, it was time to turn our attention to what was next. Mac OS High Sierra. As part of the development process, the decision was made in collaboration with our security folks that once a new OS was released, this was going to be our only supported operating system. And to help make sure that our Macs were keeping themselves up to date, the options for automatically downloading and installing Mac OS and security updates would also be enabled. So these updates would be coming from Apple's own software update servers rather than ones that we hosted ourselves. And another change was to resolve the dilemma of giving admin folks admin rights or not. Our answer is to use standard users by default and also ensure that the privileges app is installed. That means that our, our users run as standard users the vast majority of the time, but when they need admin rights, those rights are available on demand. Meanwhile, Apple was making changes of their own. One of them was to remove support for the target disk mode based a setup process that Refresh uses. In its place, we decided to use internet recovery as it was Apple supported method for installing the OS. So in this case, our setup process now looked like this. When a Mac came out of the box, we went through setup assistant, just like you would with a home-based Mac. This included going through the terms and conditions and also creating that local computer account. In this case, we set it up with the uh, account name of the user who would be receiving the Mac, and we were, would set up a uh, password for them that we would use during the setup process, and then we would later use tools to update it to what the user's actual password was. Now, once initial setup is complete, then we would use Assistant to install our software and settings. So along with launching support for High Sierra, we were also launching our new Amazon-based JamPro service. As JamPro is our primary source for software installation, new machine setup and management, this was a major step forward for SAP and endpoint management being independent of our company network. So with this work done, let's look again at what's being required, what re required being on the company network. At this point, we're down to SSO certificates and printing. We're also cutting down on the infrastructure we need to set up and run ourselves in favor of using Apple's cloud services. For example, we're using internet recovery to wipe and reload the operating system instead of having to set up and maintain our own tools. We're using Apple software update services in place of using on-premise caching servers. We're also having folks using the Mac App Store to upgrade to new versions of Mac OS. So in this case, we're getting ready for High Sierra and the countdown has now begun again. We used the Mac at SAP Jam community to let our users know that upgrading to High Sierra on release day was approved by IT. We also had also made the upgrade process even easier as the only thing needed was to go to Apple's App Store and install High Sierra from there. To help our folks with this, we put an upgrade to High Sierra button in, in our self-service. Unlike the Sierra release though, all that button did was open the Mac App Store to the correct page to download and install High Sierra. Thanks to the work done during Sierra, no other configuration was required to make SAP Macs ready for High Sierra. We have followed a similar path for Mac OS Mojave and Catalina, where we provided support on release day and also worked to be that much more independent of the corporate network. Our latest success in that regard has to do with new machine setups and user certificates. Apple's automated device enrollment program allows us to have Macs that our colleagues can set up for themselves without needing IT's assistance. So in this case, when we go through Setup Assistant, we're able to use automated device enrollment to have our users log in using their own username and password. It enrolls them into our JamPro service.
And from there, we're able to use our regular username and password. We're also able to skip a lot of the uh, pain set up in the setup assistant. And from there, we're able to uh, get them ready to set up their new Mac. After that, our assistant automatically takes over and runs the rest of the uh, setup process. Our most recent innovation involves our SSO certificates, where we've been using Enterprise Connect to connect to the AD certificate server and retrieve an SSO certificate. However, this requires a connection to the corporate network. As of April 1st, we've rolled out a new method where JamPro is used to connect to the AD certificate server and retrieve an SSO certificate for that Mac's user. Since JamPro is accessible from any internet connection, this means that getting an SSO certificate no longer requires a connection to the corporate network. So with this work done, let's look again at what's required being on the, on the company network. At this point, we're down to the bare minimum and working to close even that gap by building a Fiori app, which allows you to add corporate printers to your Mac from anywhere. What all this means is that in four years, we've turned a process that required the corporate network and a lot of support from IT into a process that can be run by one of our SAP colleagues sitting in their home using their home internet connection. Similar transformations have been occurring within other areas of SAP's and IT infrastructure, where the focus has been on moving from on-premise services to cloud services. With regards to email, we've transitioned from Exchange to Exchange Online. For file storage, we've been retiring internal file services in favor of OneDrive and SharePoint. For internal communication, we've been retiring our on-premise Skype for business in favor of Slack, Teams, and Zoom. <coughs> we've moved our human resources services to our SuccessFactors cloud service. As part of that, we implemented self-service functionality for many HR processes. Even our Jamf Pro service has moved completely to the cloud, with both our iOS and Mac management service moving to Jamf's Jamf Cloud service in the past two years. Now, while we didn't have a crystal ball and we didn't see this pandemic coming either, the actions we took between 2016 and 2020 were the right ones to help us quickly move our workforce from one in the office to one working from home. So because of this, we had time and resources available during this pandemic to develop tools to help ourselves and others. A good example of this is Qualtrics' Remote Work Pulse tool, which helps businesses understand how prepared they are to work remotely and support their employees by making sure they have what they need. And this has been made available for free for whatever organization may need it. Another example is that SCP has made Ariba Discovery open for free so that any buyer can post immediate sourcing needs and any supplier can respond. So when I was writing this talk and looking back at March and April, I kept seeing places where we had unintentionally prepared for the crisis when it came upon us. But the key word here is unintentionally. None of our previous efforts had been in the service of preparing for what actually happened. The biggest lesson in all of this is that every so often, the universe is gonna confront us with the unexpected and we're gonna have to react to that with what we've got. That said, looking back, the biggest lessons I see are these. First and most important, make sure that your employees are well equipped to work from any location. This isn't just making sure they have a laptop. This is also making sure that no matter where they are, they can log in, access their tools, tools easily and start working. Actively look for the barriers that may prevent work from getting done. This can be approached from several angles. If your vital tools are not internet accessible, your VPN capacity needs to be robust enough to accommodate extraordinary levels of use. At the same time, the more tools that you can move to be securely accessible via the internet, that's both less strain on your VPN and less chance that a VPN failure will cause a complete work stoppage. And I'm sure we've all heard this sales pitch a thousand times, but the cloud will solve many of your problems. But in this case, it was true. SAP's embrace of cloud services, both our own and others, gave us redundancy, capacity, and omnipresence. Without being able to host services for our customers and ourselves and cloud providers like SAP Cloud Platform, Alibaba, Amazon, Azure, and Google, the coronavirus transition experience for our, ourselves and our customers could have been much rockier. Also, going along with the idea of the cloud providing redundancy, having a plan B and C for when things go even more sideways than you think they possibly can. 
For example, going back to March and April, I'm sure everyone remembers how Zoom, along with its suddenly higher profile, was also found to have some security problems. Because we had multiple tools available for online meetings, we were able to keep working smoothly using these alternatives while working with Zoom to make sure that our Zoom setup was secured. Lastly, keep those lines of communication wide open. In this unprecedented situation, SAP management went to great lengths to keep the company as a whole in the loop on what was going on and how it was affecting us as a company. In addition to numerous emails and direct communications from immediate management and team members, several all hands online meetings were called during April alone to discuss what was happening and what was expected of all of us. So as promised at the beginning of the talk, um, here's where you get everything involved with it. Uh, PDF is available from the link at the top of the screen and the keynote slides, including all the uh, slides, speakers notes, and the uh, demos is available by the link at the bottom of the screen. And with that, I'll leave that up on the screen and we can go now for questions.